Hello, I'm Josh. I didn't meet everybody last time. I think there's some new people here. Um, and uh, today, uh, I'm going to show you about the Tink. It's a mesh VPN, and uh, it is uh, ridiculously easy, um, and it's uh, pretty awesome. So, uh, so I'm just going to dive in here. Uh, all the uh, left and right buttons. Oh, okay. here we go. And uh, just a quick overview, a few things. Oh, wow. I have never used a Prezi, Prezi before, so this might be a little screwed up. I don't know. So. <laughs> but uh, I should be able to get everything across. So. Okay. So just a quick overview of VPNs. What we're looking for with VPNs is secure communications, and sometimes we want to connect network segments, um, but uh, mostly just the securing the communications between. Like uh, what I use it for is uh, uh, getting all of my MySQL. I have to use MySQL. It sucks. Uh, all the everything that dumps data to MySQL all in the same place. And if you're doing that over the WAN, um, you can use SSL, but it kind of sucks in MySQL. So if you got a VPN, you don't care anymore. And you know, there's uh, all kinds of other reasons. You can even do uh, over a lot of VPNs, you can do uh, RTP, so you can secure your uh, telephone calls, SIP verifications, IMs, whatever. Um, and uh, we have a couple different choices. Uh, these are the uh, so this open VPN, pretty much everybody knows open VPN. It's really handy. Uh, clients are everywhere. Um, it's been around for quite a while. Um, it can tell IPv6, so it can do Ethernet layer tunnels. So that if you only have IPv4, you can tell to IPv6 with uh, open VPN. Yay! But uh, and it's it's generally compatible between versions. So older versions of open VPN will still connect to newer versions with some gotchas in there. Like some of the ver some of the new stuff won't work so well, but usually it works just fine. So that, that you know you can you don't have to upgrade all of your computers every time you upgrade one of open via VPN on one of them. Kind of handy. But uh, the problem we have here is um, it's all hub and spoke. So you have a main server and everything connects to that server, and that's kind of a pain in the ass because it, either everything has to transit through your hub. Uh, which can be horrible if you have bandwidth limitations, like we do in Alaska. Or um, if you want to make it into a mesh, <laughs> if you want to make it into a mesh, you have to you have to configure n plus one. You have to uh, do n plus one configurations. You have to add. You have to go to every single con computer you have hooked up to your mesh VPN and configure it to talk to every other computer. And we don't want to do that. That's a huge pain. Next we have IPsec2, which is a, a huge wide support, it's been around forever, there's clients everywhere, um, it isn't changing anytime soon, so there's no real backward compatibility to speak of, because it's, it's the same. Um, oh, I uh, didn't add this, yeah, Cisco, Cisco support it. I hate Cisco. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but it, there's a, some stuff it can't do. No Ethernet layer tunnels. It can't tunnel IPv6. Uh, and the, the same considerations with OP, open VPN, hub and spoke, and uh, n plus one configuration. So not really set up useful for a, a mesh VPN setup. And that's where uh, Tink comes into play. And um, uh, now uh, a quick gotcha here. I don't know how everybody else configures Tink. Um, the documentation is. Kind of weird, and uh, but how how I have Tink set up, which works great, is you only need a uh, configuration only uh, requires changes on two. Uh, I use three machines, so every time you add another server, you only have two or three files to change, and that's uh, it's really easy. Um, it supports broadcast packets, so you could do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. Uh, DHCP, for example, which is kind of insane. Uh, we'll get it up later. <laughs> and uh, there's direct traffic in between each node. So each node, uh, any traffic in between any of your nodes uh, goes directly from one to the other. You don't have to go through a hub anywhere. It's great. Um, some of the problems, though, is uh, like uh, all the major revisions, uh, I think there's been uh, three kind of recently, past couple of years, and they're pretty much incompatible. Um, 0.9 won't talk to 1.0, and 1.0 won't talk to 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, you know, uh, all kinds of different issues in there. So that does kind of suck. Like, right, 1.1 isn't out yet. I'm using 1.0. Um, I wish I would have started with 1.1 because they have a lot of pretty awesome uh, features in 1.1. 1 
but I'm kind of stuck with 1.0 until I go back in and reinstall and reconfigure Tink everywhere. So, and um, also, there's no iPhone client, which kind of sucks. And there, uh, there's an OS X client, but it requires Xcode. And anybody who's ever dealt with Xcode knows that it really sucks. <laughs> it got easier. It, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so first, you spend uh, an hour downloading it. Then you install uh, Brew, and then you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, there's a couple of gotchas here. Um, there's a few more, but I, I, that's all I could uh, really commit with. But, uh, okay. Moving on. And uh, we, there's some other, oh crap, there's even on the page. There's some other downsides, but we don't really care about them. So we don't think about your door. <laughs> and, uh, so like, uh, you know what, uh, I might come back to this. Um, I probably should have done this. Oh no, I missed one. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Curse you, Prezi! <laughs> okay, so um, there's a couple different modes, and I don't know what they're for. I need to do some more research. This isn't readily available, uh, apparent to me. There's router, switch, and hub, and uh, the only one I could get to work was switch mode, and switch mode, uh, it uh, builds a routing table uh, uh, for all the clients it knows about, and that's how it routes packets. And uh, so what we have here is the two circles are switches, and uh, all the squares are, are nodes, and they, uh, they first connect to one of the, uh, both the switches, and uh, after that initial connection is done, um, those uh, switches build a routing table and introduce, uh, whenever you need to connect two of the squares together, it goes, talks to one of the switches, hey, uh, where do I send packets for 10 to 50, 55? And it, then it gives back the MAC address, and uh, the two squares talk to each other, and the traffic goes in between. And uh, I have it set up this way so, uh, Either of these switches can die and the mesh stays alive. It, it, it would take both of the, the switches to go down for, for communication to stop uh, uh, all the other. So, yeah, this is the initial connection. They all talk to the, the switches, and then over there is them talking to every other uh, node. And, and, but, uh, I have no idea what it's all the same. I got it. I don't know. Okay. We're going to use better technology next time. <laughs> yeah, well, or I could. Uh, the VGA cable. Specifically. <laughs> anyway, can we do a presentation on the video presentations? You know, yeah. I don't think I'm going to do it. A little better. <laughs> and uh, there's some uh, downsides, and we don't really care about them. At least I don't really care about them. Um, both switches fail, the mesh doesn't work, but even with 90% uptime on two nodes, you still got four nines uptime for the whole network, and that's 90% uptime I think is pretty, like, uh, Wander over to low end box and you can get uh, you can get a year's worth of really tiny cracking VPS for twenty dollars a year. So two of those forty dollars a year, you have a mesh VPN. It's it's pretty awesome. And um, there are in switch mode there's traffic just for ARPs uh, when when they go out and look for MAC addresses. But on on the order of ten servers, so like between ten and ninety nine, that traffic is there's really not we don't really care about it. It's an inc inconsequential. It's not. Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, this is pretty much all of, uh, you need to configure Tink. It is really easy. Um, it uses an RSA key pair for uh, uh, authentication and, and coding and everything. And uh, you just need to copy one of the, the nodes, uh, public key, you know, one of the squares, onto both the switches, and uh, and uh, configure Tink with this switch and. Uh, in the configuration file, you just tell it to connect to both of your switches, and, uh, and then the after that you have a uh, a network device, so like a, a tongue or a tap device, and you just need to tell you just need a a script to tell the a network device what IP it has and uh, something to set up routes routes for your network, so ten uh, for whatever subnet you're using, you know to. You guys know what routes are. And then you launch it and it goes. And, uh, I know this sounds a little uh, simple, but it, it really is as simple. It's, it's really easy. One of the simple things I noticed when I was using it initially was uh, as 
soon as I added another node in, I just hooked the uh, systems that were dealing with all the proxy for the packets, and they immediately took in the, uh, the uh, connections without bringing anything down. It's all a single only process, or it's a single process to do everything. So um, being able to just reconfigure things, uh, especially in Linux land, without actually having to bring something up and down, uh, is a huge bonus and, and take us. Yeah, it, it acts just like a, a network uh, interface. It's it's pretty wild. Um, it also uh, I don't have this listed here, but uh, it also checks for uh, all the nodes it's connected to all the time. So if something goes down, it'll check in the node that it's down, and it'll keep checking. So when it comes back up, you have you don't have to intervene if there's a temporary network failure. Failure. So it's pretty handy. Is it uh, is it only tunneling v6 or does it operate dual stack native for that whole VPN mesh as well? Uh, I'm sorry. So I, I, I noticed you did a compare and contrast before sure. on the v6. I'm assuming I, I don't recall if the sync is yeah. supporting v6 in tunnel only. It will do. Or is, uh, it, or is it doing v6 native? So like it'll all of your guys, it'll all of your devices with dual stack, and you oh, yeah. have them all participating in the VPN. Yeah, it, it'll do v6 native. There's no, no okay. problems there. But uh, it'll also tunnel it if you want uh, oh, yeah. the, uh, over uh, IPv4. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, and the other thing here, if you don't want to, like, for instance, you have road warriors who need to get to your VPN, um, it supports broadcast. So you could just have it DHCP. Uh, it can send out a DHCP broadcast and ask for an IP from if you have a DHCP server on your Tink uh, network. So that's pretty awesome. I thought that was amazing. And uh, I don't think that's all I had. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> somebody a little bit about uh, uh, some of the things we were going to talk about tonight and I mentioned your presentation particularly and uh, they said so why would he be doing MySQL or SIP uh, over a VPN when you can secure it at the protocol level and then it's just easier that way and the answer is because it's not easier that way it, those standards don't exist like uh, in the latest in Debian squeeze the MySQL module for Python um, SSL was broken. It, SSL does not work. You can't. I can't use it anymore. It's pissing me off. So I have Tink now, and I don't care about it. <laughs> so uh, another another aspect of that is um, the agnosticism involved with using your own trans uh, well your layer two, your layer three transport uh, data deduplication, compression, everything else like that before compressing it um, is just not an option when you're just using IPsec or you're using uh, well you. There's IP comp, of course, but it's very uh, limited compared to using uh, better compression algorithms. Yeah. And then uh, you also have uh, data DU, you have a few other things that you can do that someone could easily just build in the tank as a module and then bam, you have it without having to change your applications that you're using at the production level. So uh, that's that's a huge boost for the open source side of things. Tank is open source. Uh, and uh, they've been developing pretty steadily. And, uh, uh, when you don't have an abandoned project in open source land and it's powered production systems throughout the world, you know that something that, you know, someone did something right. So. Well, that's my two cents. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, have any cents for us? Uh, uh, I don't think so. No. I think I'm out. Are you sense. suggesting that Tink is abandoned? No. Or something not. else was abandoned? There's no. quite a few. Uh, if you look at my GitHub repository, for instance, uh, <laughs> That's a better example. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's great seeing a big team, uh, or at least a, a highly intelligent, highly motivated team behind a project. So yeah, and, and Tink is still being developed, so they're still they're trying on. So. Great. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>